In this screencast, I'm going to cover integration in spherical coordinates. I'm going to do three questions, only one of which actually involves integration, because the primary issue is just to get used to spherical coordinates and, and understand them. The first question is the following. We are asked to write the equation z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, which is in Cartesian coordinates. We're asked to write that in spherical coordinates. And I've chosen this particular problem because it's not probably so immediately obvious as to what this is in spherical coordinates. In this case, we have to make the substitutions. So let's do this. In spherical coordinates, z is r cosine phi. So that squared will be equal to x squared. x is r sine phi cosine theta, so squared, plus y squared. y is r sine phi sine theta squared. So we square, we get r squared cosine squared phi is equal to r squared sine squared phi. And then that'll, the rest will give me times 1. I'll have a cosine squared theta and a sine squared theta, which will give me 1. Let me just erase that. All right, and so this will give me tan squared phi is equal to 1. That is to say tan phi is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay, so in some sense, these are the answers. You could take that to be the answer or that to be the answer. I'd like to carry it through a little bit further and just discuss this. Uh, let's just recall that phi in spherical coordinates is between naught and pi. And what we have to ask ourselves is of these, so if in this range of phi, which, which, uh, which phi give us tan phi is plus or minus 1? Well, if tan of pi on 4 will give me a plus 1, and tan of 3 pi on 4 will give me a minus 1. So the other way to write the answer of the equation in spherical coordinates is simply phi is a constant. It's either the constant pi on 4 or 3 pi on 4. So that would be the other way to write the equation. Simply uh, phi is equal to a constant, one of these two constants. And again, even though you're not asked to sketch it, let me just do this real fast. So, all right, so it, when phi is pi on 4, I'll have this cone. Oh yeah, hopefully you would have recognized that this is the equation for a cone. In any case, you'll see that if phi is a constant, and I've discussed this already, the, the surfaces on which phi are con is, is constant are, um, are cones. So when, pi, when phi is pi on 4, I have this upper cone, and that angle there is pi on 4. And then when phi is 3 pi on 4, I have this lower part of the cone, and that's the angle there where phi is equal to 3 pi on 4. Okay, so a nice little question in spherical coordinates and understanding it. Let me go on and do another question. It's a little bit different flavor here. You're asked, what surface is described by the following equation? Where this equation now is given in spherical coordinates. You're given that r is equal to sine phi sine theta in spherical coordinates, and you're asked, what, uh, what in the world does that correspond to? Now, you might puzzle over this for a little while and try different um, manipulations. The thing, the key insight here is to realize that this right-hand side is almost y. Uh, that is to say the y of Cartesian coordinates when written in spherical coordinates, we just need to multiply by r. So if we multiply both sides of this equation by r, we'll have r squared on the left-hand side, we'll have r sine phi sine theta on the right-hand side, and this is simply equal to y. And r squared, of course, is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Okay, now we have something we can deal with. We move the y over to the other side. You now complete the square. So I have y minus a half squared, then you have to subtract back off the one half squared that you'll get when you square that, plus z squared. And that will give me x squared plus y minus a half squared plus z squared is equal to one half squared. And so in this case, it's much clearer for in Cartesian coordinates than in spherical coordinates what the surface is. And we can see here that what this is, this is a sphere. Its radius is one half. That is to say, we have a one half. That's the radius squared. So the radius is one half. And where is it centered? It's centered on. And I wanted to specify, you know, be clear that it's in uh, Cartesian coordinates. X, Y, Z is x is zero, y is a half, and z is zero. 
So again, not imme probably immediately obvious to you that that's a sphere, but it, in fact, by going to Cartesian coordinates, we see that it is a sphere. Uh, and it just shows that in uh, spherical coordinates, one can describe a sphere not centered on the origin. And um, so I thought a nice little question. All right, let's go to the third question. The third question is an actual integration problem. You're asked to do the triple integral of z dv over this region omega. And omega is the region between the two spheres. Um, well, that's a sphere of radius 1. That's a sphere of radius 2. All right, so again, even though you're not asked to sketch it, I'm going to. And I think I'm going to, before the draw my coordinate system, I'm going to draw two circles. One, two, not quite. Uh, Good enough. All right. So those are those are meant to be spheres. So they're concentric spheres, radius one and radius two, and the region uh, omega is the region between the spheres, and that's something a region known as a spherical shell. All right. It's a region between these two spheres. That's omega. So we can write down omega in cylindrical uh, spherical coordinates. Excuse me. Very easily. R will be between these two radii one and two. Uh, which to choose next? Let's choose theta. No, let's choose phi. Actually, we'll be between naught and pi, and then I'll put theta here. Theta will be between naught and 2 pi. So now we can just go and start writing down this integral. So I'm going to use this notation. I'm going to put. Um, I'm going to explicitly label on the uh, on the integral symbols what variable I'm integrating over, just so I'm not confused by that. So theta will go from naught to 2 pi. Phi will go from naught to pi. R will go from 1 to 2. And then I have to evaluate z in uh, spherical coordinates, but that's easy. That's r cosine phi. All right, I'll put a little parenthesis around that. And now I have to do my volume element in spherical coordinates, and that is r squared sine phi dr. Now I have to put out d phi because that's the order in which I did the integration signs d theta. So now I've set up my integration in spherical coordinates. The problem completely separates, so let's separate it. That'll be say theta will go from naught to 2 pi d theta. Phi will go from naught to 2 to pi, excuse me. Then I'll have a cosine phi, a sine phi, and then r will be between 1 and 2, and I'll have an r cubed dr. So in the case of theta, I can just evaluate that directly. That's just 2 pi. Um, phi, you're going to use, the, oh, I left off my d phi. But at least I caught it before the end. Right? So that should be a, a d phi in there. So you're going to use the double angle formula here, and you're going to get a minus cosine of 2 phi over 4, evaluated from naught to pi. Then r naught to pi, boy. And then r is, uh, then we'll, we'll be at r to the fourth over 4 evaluated from 1 to 2. So this then is going to give me pi, 2 pi, excuse me. Then here I'm going to have a plus 1 minus, uh, wait, 2 pi, give, give me, excuse me, it'll give me a minus 1. Um, minus minus 1 is plus 1 over 4. Okay, and that's going to give me a 16 minus 1, which is a 15 over 4. Hopefully I haven't made any mistakes yet. And you see here right away that this is equal to 0. That is to say, the whole answer is equal to zero. And you should have seen that. You should have been able to see that even before you started. Look, you're integrating over the spherical shell, z. And in the upper half, um, the upper half of this volume, uh, z is positive. All right? You don't have to worry about what the actual integral is. Every point here, z is positive, and there's a corresponding point below where z is negative. And whatever you get by integrating in the upper half will be exactly canceled by the lower half. So this integral, because if you want to say it this way, because z is odd, um, it will be zero. So the upper half, the, the integral in the upper half will exactly be canceled by the integral in the lower half, and that's what this incorporates. And in fact, you should be able to see that because this is this this phi as it goes from phi equals zero here and it swings down to pi there, and this is the integral that's canceling out and giving you zero. So you shouldn't have actually had to to, to do that integral. Uh, but I thought you, it was maybe worth seeing one in which uh, that happened, so you won't be surprised if you see that later. Uh, let me just say a good way to extend this, and let me see if I can go down here just a little bit, is suppose instead I had said the following. I think I've done this in a row right. 
um, suppose I'd restricted it to just one octant. So suppose I'd said, okay, exactly the same region omega, except that I'm going to say that x has to be positive, y has to be positive, and z has to be positive. So that I'm uh, I'm in the spherical shell. I'm between the two spheres, but only in 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 one octant of 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 all of R three. This one. Uh, then do the same, otherwise do the same problem, do the same integral, and what do you get? And I'll just tell you what I get, hopefully I did it right, I get 15 over 16 pi. And the only thing that's going to change, everything is going to be the same except the limits of integration, and I'll let you think about those and worry, worry about these, what these limits of integration are. Those limits of integration are going to change such that you no longer get a 0 here, you no longer get a 2 pi here, and the result is uh, 15 over 16 pi. Let me just check this, this is right, right? Yeah, that looks right. So that's, uh, that's what I wanted to say about integrating in spherical coordinates.